HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we will get you up to date with the Hillers playoff teams. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider, plus a whole lot more. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. At the last select board meeting, the board reorganized as they do every year following the town election. So we are going to the reorganization of the select board. I will entertain a motion. So I would nominate the sitting vice chair, or the, the sitting chair, uh, Brenda Tedstone. Second that. For what position? For, for chair. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Are there any other motions? Okay, hearing that, I would like to call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? And abstentions. It seems like that carries. Um, so I would like to. Congratulations, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Thank you very much. <laughs> so now you're the chair. So now I'm the chair. It's great. Okay. So I would like to nominate. I've got a couple issues with your board. So you're out of line <laughs> and you're out of order. <laughs> <laughs> not I shall remain out of order. You are not recognized. That was one of my most <laughs> famous <laughs> lines. <laughs> uh, so I would like to nominate Mr. Catino as the vice chair to the uh, to the select board. And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Wait, uh, no. Nope. Are there any other nominations? Okay, I hear none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? So that carries. Congratulations, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Be seen. The select board also approved a decision by police chief Edward Lee. Tell a little bit about Arthur. He grew up in Southboro and later attended UMass Lowe, where he's obtained a bachelor's degree in liberal arts and sociology, and has a master's degree in criminal justice. He joined the police department only back in 2014, and uh, completed his training at the Reading Police Academy. During his time as patrolman at the Hopkinton Police Department, he has held various positions throughout the organization, such as field training officer, crime prevention officer, Knox Box coordinator, commercial vehicle license officer, cross match administrator, and SEPTED officer. Um, I believe you're all familiar with the SEPTED crime prevention through environmental design. That was one of my goals. Arthur was cho chosen to head that up, and he's done an excellent job working with businesses and consulting them on security needs. Um, he is also a, a fire mounts permitting officer, and uh, it's my pleasure to introduce him to you for your consideration. Well, you tell us a little about you. Um, I don't often get a chance to put you guys on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I like to take full advantage of it. I mean, the chief covered um, a lot of it, just on a local. Um, I didn't go to Algonquin, though, so that's okay um, with the boarding school. But um, yeah, from South, I've been here for about five years, and uh, I think I'm a pretty good people person. And um, you know, I try to put myself in other people's shoes, and I think that's a big role is, um, you know, in this community, interact with the community. And, uh, you know, I try to tell myself what, you know, you can't ask people to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. I think that's a big leadership role. Um, so that's, that's just a little bit about me. Make a motion to um, follow the recommendation by Chief Lee to promote Detective Arthur Schofield to the rank of Sergeant. Is he a detective or an officer? Detective or officer. Right uh, now. Officer, officer, from officer to sergeant. So officer. just a sergeant. Uh, Bill's the detective. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? <laughs> there is. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sir. Thank Congratulations. you very much.
point of procedure, I don't know, is we there a, uh, is, is there like a pinning procedure? I've been, I've been, my brother's a law enforcement officer, and uh, I know there's a pinning procedure to go along with this, so. You guys can come up, sir. Come on up, family. <laughs> and Chief, to your point, uh, the reason this nose is so pretty is because I never did play hockey against his uncle. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Good job. Thank you. Hiller Girls Tennis captured a win in the first round of the MIAA playoffs versus Bridgewater Raynham. We were on the scene to capture some of the action and talk with some of the team. Hopkinton Hiller's Girls Tennis finished the regular season with a record of 15 wins and two losses. They earned the fourth seed in the South Division I bracket. This past Tuesday, the Hillers took down Bridgewater Raynham in the first round of the playoffs. They advance on to host King Phillip. HCAM News was on the scene to catch up with some of the players. Um, I play second singles here. Excellent. And how has your uh, season gone so far? And also, how's it been playing with this group this year? Um, our season is going great. We're, our record is 15 and 2, with only losing to Dover Sherborne in the TVL. And I'd say we have some really good depth to the team, even though we only graduated two singles players. Um, I now had to step up to play second singles, and but our team is still doing really good. And the team itself is really close and we have a lot of fun together. Terrific, and uh, how did your matchups go today so far? Um, well, I won today 6-0, 6-0, and everyone else is still playing, but it's looking pretty good, and I hope we go far in the tournament this year. Absolutely, and you guys were towards the top of the TVL, I believe you only had one loss in the TVL. Uh, what's it feel like to be able to have the incredible record that you guys had this year? Um, it feels great. I mean, we're TVL large champs, only lost to Dover Sherborn, which was a really tough team, but everyone played amazing. And it's really nice to be on the top, but you always got to keep working hard. It's, it's a really good team dynamic and we're just so happy to have everyone that we do on the team. Yeah, it's really like inspirational. It really brings you up. Like the team as a whole, it's a great thing to be a part of. Right. For those that don't know, can you talk about your role on the team? Um, so as a junior, um, I kind of help out the younger kids and just kind of make sure that they know their place on the team and that they're comfortable kind of getting the swing of things. As a doubles player, we kind of kind of just hold ground, make sure everything's stable. <laughs> <laughs> keep the team up and feeling good. <laughs> and how was it playing together today? It looked like you had a good match out there. Yeah, I mean, we Lots love playing with fun. each other. Yeah, it's been a really good season together. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we wish you the very best of luck going on and hopefully Thank many you. more playoff games. Thank you. Time. Thank you. Third year head coach Lynn Calkins has enjoyed coaching this year's group. Um, it's been a pleasure to coach this group of girls. Uh, some of the girls are returnees from last season. Uh, we have three new players on the team, two freshmen and a sophomore playing for the first time on the team. And they've really gelled well this season. Um, we've had to move some people around in positions, including uh, one of our number one doubles player, uh, Maya Storm, who's now um, a number two singles player. So that's been a little bit of an adjustment this season from last year. Um, we graduated our number one singles player from last year and then one of our other top singles players um, was injured a few days before tryout, so she's not in the lineup this season, unfortunately. And uh, what's it feel like to be able to just do what you did this year in the TVL, particularly at one loss to Dover Sherborne, uh, but tough league to dominate, but you guys did it. What's that feel like? Um, it always feels great to win the TVL, and this year we did lose a match to Dover Sherborne, which is a great team every year. Um, so um, we did still win the TVL large, and 
pretty much all season we've just talked about being consistent in practice um, and in our match all of our matches and just approaching every match no matter who the opponent is the same way um, and I think you know that helps us has helped us find a lot of success um, in our TVL matches and our non-league matches as well and how did uh, today's matches go they seem to go pretty well for you Great. Um, we're up right now 4-0. We've got number three singles still on the court, um, but overall we've already won the match in our first round um, in the Division One South um, uh, bracket. So I'm thrilled about that. Um, we're going to move on to place to play, I believe, um, King Philip. Um, and fortunately, we get to host another match um, as the number four seed. Um, so we'll still be here on the Hoppington High School courts um, in a couple of days to play that match. Hopkinton Hillers boys tennis finished the regular season with a record of 16 and 1. In the first round of the MIAA playoffs, they took on Bishop Fian and ended up getting the sweep. HCAM News was on the scene to catch up with the captains and Hiller head coach Michael Miller. All right, guys. So um, I understand that you. Uh have clinched the win here today. Uh, can you talk about how your uh, matches went today? Start over here. Um, matches went great today. Uh, we all started off strong. Uh, I think nobody lost their first game, and it just looked great from the beginning. Yeah, from what I saw, like the first three games across the entire match, everybody was up. Everybody um, was winning their were winning their matches, and we ended up securing the securing the win. Perfect. And uh, what events did you participate in? Singles, doubles? Uh, we both played singles today. Uh, he's first, uh, and I'm second in the ladder. Oops. Sorry. Oh, you guys had a, a tremendous season. You went uh, 16 and one, I believe, is your record. Yes. Uh, could, and you won the TBL large, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like uh, playing with this group all season? Uh, it's been it's been a great experience. This year has probably been my favorite year among past four years on the team just because we all have like great connections with each other and we're all close like super close to each other and it just makes our team even stronger on the court and off the court. Yeah. We're all motivated to do well, we're all motivated to win and we're all very encouraging of each other um, and we all want to help each other out as much as possible. Right, and what were your thoughts on this Bishop V and team you played today? Um, they're really strong, uh, great competition. Uh, late on in playoffs, and I guess we're looking forward to later and to, to find some more competition too. Yeah, I was expecting them to be very good when um, I looked at their record beforehand, and they were indeed very good. But um, we managed to beat them, and I believe it's four, three, one right now. We're up, and we're just waiting on second doubles to finish their match. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, we wish you the best of luck the rest of the postseason, and hopefully many more playoff matchups. Yeah, good matchup. You know, once you get into the tournament, um, seeds only mean so much. You know, we're fortunate to come in with the number one seed. Uh, I think when you're there, you're you know you're going to get everybody's best for sure. Um, they came in somewhere around a 16 or 17 seed, but they, they formed to be a much better opponent than that. Their their number one was extremely strong. Did a little bit of read up on him. Um, you know, one of the best players in the state, and fortunately for us, our number one, Nolan Storm, um, just played a fantastic, virtually ever free game today to be able to come out on top. Um, and all the way down the lineup, um, they had strong number two, um, and you know, from the standpoint of just being able to go, go out there and the kids played with a lot of confidence today, I think that's big. I think what's really important is that we're playing our best tennis going into the tournament, and I feel like we're, we're peaking at the right time. And you guys, I believe, went 16 and one during the regular season. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like to coach this group? It's been a great ride. Um, we're, we're senior heavy, so we've had a lot of these players for four years. I think this is one of the most cohesive teams that we've had so far. With that senior leadership, I think the younger players look up to them and they lead by example. They, they make practices fun. Uh, you know, they go out and we try different things and they're learning a lot from each other, I think, which is really important. When you have players that are high skill, skill level players, players that are mentally strong, they understand the value of, of being together with their teammates on the court and off the court. It really leads to a great blend of you know, strong tennis as well as great team camaraderie. And they've been a pleasure to coach all year. All right, 
Nick Coach. Well, we wish you the best of luck going forward and hopefully many more playoff matchups to come. Thanks, Tommy. Appreciate it. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hiller Softball hosted Milton in the first round of the South Division I sectionals. Here's a look at how it went. 13th seeded Hiller Softball hosted 20th seeded Milton in the first round of the South Division I sectional playoffs. Bottom of the first, the Hillers got the hitting started. She'll get a piece of this one over to center field, it goes. Here comes Whalen, one to nothing Hillers and Holly will stop at second, an RBI double. A Walkwood score run. And this is hit up the left side, that drops in fair. Here comes Holly, and here comes another run. And two runs will score for the Hillers, a two RBI single for Alyssa McIntyre. Going on contact. Down low, and the runner from third gonna try to score, the flip is too late. And it's four to nothing, Hillers, Alyssa McIntyre comes around. Great base running by Alyssa McIntyre. Certainly was. Four run score in the inning. The Hillers added another run in the bottom of the second and a whole lot more in the bottom of the third. Holly swings up the left side, it goes. One run is in. Here comes Whalen. The throw is going to be off the mark. Two runs will score. And it is a two RBI hit for Katie Holly. Score that a two RBI single. She advances the second on the throw in. And it's an eight nothing lead for the Hillers. Tara Kester up to third. Fourth seed, Cliff North. Up high, and almost out of the ballpark, and now Holly is gonna score. Katie Holly comes around to score on the very wild pitch. It's 10 nothing Hillers. Five more runs in the third. It was a 10 nothing lead for the Hillers, heading to the bottom of the fifth. And Jillian Cedia ended the game with a boom. Right up in the pitch. And she gets a piece of this one to the fence. See you later. Goodbye, home run, Jillian Cedia. A 13 and nothing lead for the Hillers. She absolutely crushed that ball. The Hopkinton Hillers take the win by way of the mercy. In the fifth inning, 13 to nothing, Hopkinton advances on to play at fourth seeded Plymouth North Saturday, June 8th. The Hillers are now 14 and 6 on the season. Tom Nappy here with Jillian and Juliana Cedia. Girls, congratulations. You're advancing on in the playoffs. Thank you. And uh, you both had a pretty good game out there as well. Uh, Jillian, what did it feel like to hit that three run homer to walk off with the Mercy win? Um, it felt really good just to like, help my team finish it in the end and just like. It was really hard hit, so it felt good, <laughs> yeah. And Juliana, you pitched a great game as well. Uh, how did you feel pitching in the postseason? And uh, how did you feel facing these Milton hitters? Well, it's good because I've never faced them before, so it was like a brand new, fresh start. And I haven't, I've been struggling for the past like week, so it was really good to like do good today. It felt good. And about that home run, what'd you see on that pitch? It just seemed like you knew you were going to hit that past the fence. Um, yeah, it felt really good. Um, I've, I always like visualize it before I get them, so I just like had a feeling and it felt really good. And we got the battery combination as well for the Hillers. Uh, what's it been like to play together this season? It's crazy. Like me and Jill have never been on a team before ever. Yeah. And so she like always pushes me really hard to like do my best. So that's really good. Yeah. What do you tell her uh, when you go out there to the pitcher circle for encouragement? Um, I, he tell, yells at me. <laughs> I tell her to work hard and I tell her to give everything for the team because we got to do it for them. All right, girls. Uh, so you're advancing to Plymouth North uh, this Saturday. Uh, do you know anything about this Plymouth North team coming up? And are you excited to go out there? Yeah, um, super excited. excited. We don't really know anything don't about know anything. them, but I mean, I mean, we play really well when we don't really know anything. Yeah. We just put our heads down and work hard, so I think that's what we're going to go out and do. Mm -hmm. All right, well, congratulations on a great win, and best of luck this Saturday. Thank you. Coach, a walk-off 13-0 win in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, how does it feel to...
coming into the playoffs. I know you probably didn't get the seed that you wanted, but you get a nice win here to start things off against a good young Milton team. Yeah, we were really excited to have a home game. Um, and we struggled a little bit at the end of the season, so um, we worked out a lot of the kinks yesterday in practice, and I'm really proud of the way they came out and played today. And uh, what was your uh, thoughts about that three-run homer to walk off with the Mercy win by Jillian? Oh, I still have goosebumps. I still have goosebumps. That was incredible. Almost dead center. It was fantastic. Great hit. It's a great hit. It certainly was, and Julian, <laughs> it was an unbelievable hit. That might have been the furthest home run I've seen all season. It was definitely, uh, she got every every piece of that ball. It was fantastic. And Juliana pitched a great game as well. What were your thoughts on her performance? She pitched a fantastic game. Uh, she looked a little tired towards the end, but she was able to work through it, and uh, she hit her spots, and her ball was spinning well, and um, I'm really proud of her too. Yeah. So uh, Plymouth North coming up on Saturday. Do you know anything about them yet? Uh, that's what I'm going to go home and do right now. <laughs> I just know they have a really nice school. That's it. <laughs> I don't know anything about them. All right, Coach. We'll let you uh, get home so you can do your research right. for Saturday's game and hopefully many more playoff games to come. Right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, June 7th at 5 p.m., local poets and musicians gather to perform in a new open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, June 10th at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, June 11th at 6.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Select Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, June 5th at 7 p.m., Deputy Preservation Officer Doug Harris gives a presentation on Hopkinton's local indigenous ceremonial sites on a new HCAM TV special. And also at 7 p.m. on HCAM Ed, the HHS Drama Ensemble performs a series of short student-directed plays on a new HCAM Ed special. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Baseball vs. Norwood and the Girls Lacrosse vs. Bishop Fian game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, we'll talk to you again soon. Go Hillers and go Bruins. say that this is my favorite day in Hopkinton. How could it not be? This is pure Americana. Right now, right now, all over this great nation, just like us, people are coming together to pay their respects to those who made the ultimate sacrifice that allow us to be free. Memorial Day is another truly American holiday designed for us to put our political and social ideologies and to dismiss our petty differences and just be thankful and pray and reflect on those who stood in harm's way to ensure our safety. Celebrating Memorial Day every year reaffirms our faith in our nation and way of life. On this day, as always, 
we pause at monuments and plaques in our town that serve as physical reminders of this day and its meaning. These memories and emotions that define this day hopefully will be passed on to those who follow us. Honoring the dead brings people closer than any other event in life, sharing grief and remembrance of those we have loved and respected. And by honoring those who gave all, we give new life and a rebirth to our American ideals and patriotic feelings. May the souls buried here in Hopkinton feel the love and appreciation demonstrated by our community as we gather here on Memorial Day. God bless America and Semper Fi.